Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're continuing with the fantasy castle on the floating island. So in this episode we're looking at texture painting. I'm going to keep it very basic and very simple in terms of the artistic technique. But I am going to show a few new interesting ways of getting good looking textures on your models. So we should be able to go from this to this. We'll be looking at how to bake out shadows and how to set up for texture painting and how to paint textures in the simplest way. Now many of you might not want to explore the texture painting pathway and want to continue with the low poly work. So I've made it so you can easily skip this video and we'll continue that work in the next one. But for those that want to add a bit more detail to the textures, then there'll be enough in this episode to guide you into that path. This video is sponsored by Sketchfab, which is a great place to buy and sell and view 3D models online. I've used it for a few years now to sell models and what's really fantastic is that you can view the faces and topology of the model before you buy so you know exactly what you're getting. You can create an excellent portfolio on there so you can show off your work to its fullest. Links in the description. I'll complete this tutorial by showing you how you can place your models on Sketchfab at the end of the modeling process. So here's where we got up to in the last episode. We've colored our rocks and the grass, and we're going to work on the rock base again today. So what you can see so far is that the HDRI in Eevee is offering us a bit of shadow. So that's this thing down here that's illuminating our scene. If I go to rendered mode now, you can see that there's very little light and no shadows in the scene at all. So we will need an HDRI in the background when we're baking to offer some sort of shadows and depth to our rocks. So I'll quickly set that up now. So we go down to the shader tab across to world, shift A to add texture and an environment texture, not an image texture, but an environment texture. Add that in. We could hook it up now, but it will go purple. And that's because we haven't got a texture in here yet. So I'll open one up. I'll go to my HDRI folder. And I find the best thing for this is to go for a nice gray colored one. So one that's got very little color, basically. Something like this is quite nice. It gives a sort of nice natural look and tone. If we go for something that's colorful, it will affect the color of our base quite a lot. All those HDRIs are from HDRI Haven or similar places, and they add this background image in which lights our scene. So like I say, a nice, good, even distribution of light there offering us some shadow. Now the next thing we need to do is to unwrap our object. So we want to take 2D information and place it onto our 3D object, and Blender needs to know whereabouts to place the 2D information. So the best place for that is the UV editing workspace. So I'll tick on that. I've got my rock selected already. And if I select all, nothing appears in here. That's because it's not unwrapped yet. So the easiest way to do that is to press U to unwrap and then smart UV project here. Now don't worry too much about this dialog box, but just turn your margin up to 0.06. And I'll explain what that is in a second and press OK. So if I zoom into this, you can see that it's taken these faces and placed them onto this 2D area. So this is a 2D map for this 3D object. If I zoom in, you can also see that the distance between the islands, as they're known, is a reasonable distance and they won't overlap or touch each other. And that's what the island margin is about. If they overlap at all, you'll have problems later on. It's worth just quickly going across and checking that there's no overlap or any errors. So that's a fine unwrap. If you want to know more about unwrapping, then do check out my other tutorial links in the description. But that's all we need to do for the unwrap now. The next stage is the baking. I find it much easier if we have another window, so I'm going to pull down a window from here and change this to the shader editor. I'm going to press N to get rid of that toolbar and zoom in just a touch. So now if I go across to look dev, you can see that we've got these shadows that we want to bake on to this texture map here to give us a bit of depth in our object and then we can paint some detail on top of that afterwards. So what I'm going to need is a new image to bake onto. So we come to here where it says new, create new image and press new. I'm going to call this rock base bake and untick the alpha because we don't need any transparencies and everything else you can leave as it is. If you want a really detailed bake, you can put these up to 2048, but it does take a lot longer. I'll press OK and you can see that's created a black image there. Now to bake onto this image, we need it in our shader editor. So shift A, texture, image texture, and then we can find that image. If I zoom in, we can press this down arrow here and find our rock base bake. Now we don't actually need to do anything else to this. Just make sure that it's selected. It should have a white outline. Now in order to bake, we need to be in cycles because it doesn't work in Eevee. So we can go to our render tab over here and change to cycles. This is generally a lot faster with your GPU. So I'm going to change that across the GPU, but it doesn't matter if you haven't got that option. So now that I'm in cycles, let's see what that actually looks like. 
and you can see that it offers quite a nice looking soft shadows and it actually does a better job than Eevee. And this is the shadow information and light information that we'll be baking onto our base. It's worth mentioning as well, if I go into object mode, I'll just turn on my overlays and press tab to go into object mode. If I right click and shade smooth, we don't get that nice chunky look, which I actually want to keep and have in the bake. So I'm going to right click shade flat and keep these nice sharp elements. So what we need to do now is go down to the bake panel. So we're in the render tab down to the bake panel and rather than bake type combined, we just want the color, so the diffuse. Now this is one of the rare occasions where I use direct and indirect lighting as well as the color when I'm baking. If you want to know more about baking, you can check out my baking series. The playlist will be in the description. But in this case, we just need to make sure that all these are highlighted blue and then press bake. Before you do that, just double check that this texture is selected because that's what we're baking to. We're baking this color and light information here onto this 2D texture here. So I'll press bake and you can see it starts down the bottom here. If you get any error messages, then it's likely you haven't got that texture selected or that you haven't unwrapped your object. Okay, so here's our baked information. I'll just make this panel a bit bigger so we can see it. If I zoom right in, you can actually see some of the noise and that's the sample settings over here. You can put this up if you want less noise, but this is absolutely fine. And what else you might notice is there's a big black spot here. That's where the grass is covering up the top of our rocks. So it's all completely black from the shadows. Other slight things you might notice is that there's some green reflected light from the grass. And that's all absolutely fine and will look great. Now we need to save this image. So image, save as. Rock base bake two because it's the second time and press save. Now that it's saved, if I go to look dev mode and you can see this is what it looks like in look dev. It's a very sort of hard light. Now if I plug my color in, we can see it instantly goes a bit darker. We've got a softness to our shadows and it looks a bit smoother. But what we can also do now is right click shade smooth. And that gives us smooth shading, but with the color from here. So we've got that sort of chunky look and we've got everything coming from cycles that we had before, but we've got it in Eevee. And it's a lot more detailed and better looking in my opinion. We can also now paint on this very easily. In order to do that, I'm going to go to my texture painting tab just here. Once again, I'm going to bring down another window. You don't have to do this, but I find it easier to explain. I'm going to change that to the shader editor and press N to get rid of that window and come in just so we know what's going on in the shader editor. The other thing about texture paint is it defaults to solid viewport shading and we want to change that to look dev. So this is much easier on a graphics tablet, but you can do this with a mouse because we're trying to keep it as simple as possible. If you've not used texture painting before, then do check out my introduction to texture painting, but I'll run through it very quickly. So F is to resize your brush. Shift F is to resize the strength of your brush. You can find those controls down here as well. Now in the texture painting panel, we've got our rock base bake. So that's the texture selected and that's the texture we're painting onto. And you can see that over here as well. If I scroll down a bit, we can see the color settings. And there's a couple of ways we can paint this. One is to select colors from here. So I can press S to sample and it changes the color in my color picker. We can also, if I open up the color palette here and I press S and then left click, it creates that color in the palette that I can click on and use again. So I might want to go around sampling a few colors, perhaps some of the darker colors underneath and then the lighter colors on top here. So we've got a nice color palette based on what we've got here. And I could then choose these and go around and just paint in some of the dark areas. I've got a strength of two, so it's very low, and you can just, in a sense, highlight areas by deepening the shadows. You might want to go around the top a bit more and make that a bit darker. Don't worry about painting onto the grass because it's actually painting onto the shape underneath. So that's one way of painting, and it's fairly simplistic. I can, with this color, always darken it slightly if I want to add a bit more depth. Now this can be a bit tricky with a mouse and what you can do is under the stroke settings, you can change it to line and then you can just click and drag and draw a line. Now that line was slightly darker and that's because I've got pen pressure on. So I'm using a graphics tablet, but the line tool negates that pen pressure. So I'll just undo that. I can lower my strength a bit and draw some lines in here. I can also go to my light color, maybe lighten that a bit more and add some highlights. So just on the very tips, I can add some sharp highlights where the light's hitting it. So I'm basically intensifying 
the lighting and making it more stylized. Now there may be sections here that are a bit chunky and pixelated and you can actually use the smudge brush if I make that a bit bigger and just smudge them out slightly. Be delicate with this, it's not necessary to go overboard. So these are some easy, quick, simple tools that you can use without much effort. There may be also triangular areas like this that you can smudge out because they don't really offer any useful look and feel. What you can also do with this brush is make the edges slightly more wobbly, if I make my brush smaller in fact and that can help with making it look more natural. So that's one way of doing it. The other way with the brushes, the brush settings, in terms of colouring, is to use the blend modes Multiply and Screen. So Multiply darkens, so we don't really need to worry about colours here, and Screen lightens. You can give it a bit of colour and it can make it look interesting and unique, but for now I'll just bring this into the middle so you can see what it does. So the screen brush here will lighten and I can lighten the top here. Just keep your strength fairly low. And I've still got my line tool on. So I'm going to turn that off now and turn it back to space. And I can lighten the top areas that I need to as if the light's coming from one direction. And just be guided by what's there already and just intensify it. And already it's looking quite nice. I can also darken areas with the multiply brush. You might want to go fairly sharp with this, so a small brush, so you can add some nice details in the crevices. Now with the multiply brush and the screen brush, the more you brush, the darker or lighter it will get, dependent on the brush. Now you can turn the strength up and maybe add some details, some rocky details such as these. This is much easier with the graphics tablet, but that's just preference and it's not essential. What you can do as well is offer some interesting color variations to so go to the mix, which is the color, and choose a color not too far away from the original and a very low strength and just offer some color over the top. And you can vary that to make it look more interesting. You could go really elaborate with this and maybe a bit more strength and really go for it and have some fun. But that's entirely up to you. I'll undo that work because I'll just try and keep it simple for now. Nice light brush and just a little bit of color variation around the place. Okay, so that's the color of the rock. Make sure you do save your work, so image, save. And now we've saved that all onto our baked image. If you wanted to keep the base and save that, you can obviously save as and save a copy so you're not writing over the original. Now here I'm just adding a tiny few highlights, but again, if you're not confident, don't feel like you need to do these. I'm just having a bit of fun. Okay, so for the grass, it's a fair bit easier, I would say. We don't need to bake the grass because there's no real sharp edges or shadows. So what I'm going to do is go up to here and change this to object mode so I can select my grass now and change back to texture paint mode. Now we haven't got a texture for the grass, we're still on our rock base here. I'm just going to save that image to save the changes I've made. And with the grass selected, I need to add a texture into here. I can do that nice and easily in the texture paint section. But there's one thing I need to do before I add my texture and see if you can remember what that is. It does give us a warning message over here, in fact, UV map needed. And that means we need to unwrap our object. So let's quickly go to the UV editing space again. It's in edit mode, I can select all, U to unwrap, and smart UV project. I've got my island at 0 0.06 already and press OK. I'm going to get rid of this image here. It's not deleting it, it's just getting rid of it from the background. So I'll press the cross there. And you can see my grass unwrap there. Just double check, make sure nothing's overlapping. And these ones look a tiny bit close, but when we zoom in, we can see that they're a bit apart, so that's fine. If you want to move any, or you need to move any, you can come up to these tools here. There's faces, edges, vertices, and islands. Islands is the easiest, and you can just grab them and move them apart if you need to with G. So let's go back to a texture paint now. Now we've got our unwrap, we need to add a texture. So we can come up to here. We've lost our warning message about there being no UV map. We've now got no textures, so we need to add one. So I can press add here. That's the same as what we did in the image editor last time, but I can do it over here as well and press the plus sign, base color, grass base color. You can give it a green base, it's a good idea. This is quite a dark green base, so I might go a bit lighter than that. Get rid of the alpha and press okay. So yes, it's a bit darker, that's fine though, we can change that quite easily. 
Now moving around, you might notice that we can see some sort of glare coming across our object a bit, and that can put us off painting. The easy way to sort that out is just to bring the specular right down. And it does actually give it a really soft look. And I quite like that. So it's a really rich green. You might like that, or you might want to change it. In order to change that, we can go to the fill brush here, and we can then choose a green. I'm going to pick this one, so try and remember what the tool was for that. So S for sample, and then left click. Now we've got the green color there. So we can see what green that is. I'll just zoom into this a bit. Control middle mouse button will zoom in, and you can see me picking the color. And you might want to maybe have it lighter, more saturated off to the side here. It's entirely up to you. Once you're happy with the color, make sure your blend mode is on mix and you can fill in nice and easily. You might want to test a few. And I quite like the look of that. It's quite saturated, maybe a bit more saturated than my last one, but we'll see how it goes. Now we're ready to texture paint. I'm going to show you a new technique now. So with the paintbrush, I'll just zoom out of this a bit. We're still on screen, so remember that. We can change it back to mix. And I want to add a bit of texture around the edges. So I can go to my texture mask. So I'll just turn off stroke and go to texture mask. Not texture, but texture mask and create a new texture. I want to create a brush to paint a sort of noisy effect around the edge. So this is called texture. And we need to remember that and go to our texture properties just here. And it's on brush, but I need to change it to the brush mask texture to make sure it's the same one as it is here. I can then change this to maybe some noise or clouds or whatever you fancy. I'm gonna go for some noise, make my brush nice and big, go back to my tool settings and change the color slightly, otherwise it's gonna be exactly the same, maybe a tiny bit yellowy, and paint onto this. Now nothing's happening at the moment. Now the reason for this is when I created my grass, if I come up to the overlays here and go to face orientation, you can see that this is all red. That means the normals are facing the wrong way. I'll quickly go into edit mode and show you what's going on. So the blue is absolutely fine, but the red is all facing inwards. We can easily change that. We've got everything selected, or we press A to select all. Shift N will reverse and recalculate those normals, as you can see down there. There is an option as well inside, in case that didn't work, and you tick that and it will make sure they're the right way around. So if you have any problem painting, check out the face direction under the overlays. So that face direction is just there, face orientation. When it's in edit mode, if I go to object mode, it's a slightly different place and it's there. I can now turn this off and go back to where we were and back to texture paint mode and try and start painting. And now we can see that noisy color coming through. I'll just undo that and go from an angle slightly so I make sure I get all the edges. I want it to be slightly brighter on the edge, as if it's catching the light slightly. And I'm just using my mouse here to show that this can be done with a mouse. And just that tiny bit of change there has added some vibrancy to my grass. So I think it's nice to get a few color variations and tonal variations in here. Back to my graphics tablet now. Maybe put the strength up a bit. I've still got my texture enabled here. It's on tiled, you can also use things like random, and that will create a random effect instead of a tiled effect, which can be helpful. And on the very extreme edges, you might want just a bit more brightness. And there we go, some nice patchy grass. We can come back to this later when the tower and things are on the grass, maybe to improve it. Okay, so that's texture painting. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing, there's quite a few new things in there, but do check out my other playlists about texture painting if you want to take this further. In the next episode, we'll be building the fantasy castle. So thanks for watching, and I hope this helps.